All right, welcome back to the Biblos Network. We are so glad that you have decided to join us today. I trust you're enjoying the blessing of the Lord, the favor of God, where you are, that your churches are blessed. We have just emerged from East Coast Conference, and I am here to tell you the Lord helped us. He helped us greatly. A great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Brother Marks, Bishop Godair, Brother Jackson, Brother Alviar, Brother Nathan Holmes. What a time. What a time. Um, it's a great day to be apostolic. It's a great day to be serving God. Don't you let this world talk you out of your consecration to the Lord. We are Jesus name one God people and we are unashamed of it. We're glad you've taken the time to join us today. I I have with me a special guest, a friend of Biblos and of Durham, and he is a, a young pastor in the in the mid California area, pastor in a great church, and he and, he and his wife are they love God, they are passionate about the things of God. It's good to have my friend Brad Allard with me. God bless you. Great to be here, brother. Welcome Urshan. to Biblos. Thank you. Beautiful studio. Well, you know, we're working, we're trying, doing our little our little part. Yeah. Um, this was a great week. We're honored you could come and be with us. Um, this, is this your first East Coast? First East Coast. I was extremely impressed. Mighty presence of God. Great preaching. Some of the greatest cre preaching I've heard in many, many, many years. And uh, it was an honor to be here. It really was. You know, I had a chance to sit down with Brother Alviar and do a Biblo session with him. I've always known he was a great preacher mm -hmm. and a student of the Word, but I did not know he was as big a historian really? as he is. One of the things I loved about our session, you know, we're both, you and I are both embracing tech to sure. help promote the apostolic message. Absolutely. And in his message, he um, he brought out Sao Paulo, Brazil. Uh, you ever been to Brazil? Never. So, you know, it's crazy congested and, you know, high rises, people on top of each other. I mean, it's, it's populated, a yeah. tough place, mm -hmm. a lot of crime. Mm -hmm. He said in one building, they will have 30,000 people living in it. One building. Yeah. That's bigger than most rural towns. Absolutely. And he's like, you're going to knock on all those doors? Yeah. You're going to, how are we going to reach them? And if the gospel can only be conveyed by one-on-one -on -one contact, how are we going to reach yeah. this world? We need technology. Absolutely. We need technology. It's the only way to get the job done. Yeah. So his point was, not only is it to be used, he actually took it a half step further and said, we will be held accountable for not using it. God help us. So if God, if God give, you know, so cutting edge in the apostles day is a ship. Yeah. You know, we, Paul, he used it. He used it. He used it. Absolutely. Could you imagine if he had to walk all those places and he did quite a fair share of walking, but he used the ship when he needed to. You know, what struck me when I went to Israel was in my mind, everything was larger than life. Yeah. You know, when I think of the sea of Galilee, I think of, you know, in my mind, I have this image of this humongous uh, horizon, yeah. you know, this, these rough waters. I got there. I could swim across the Sea of Galilee. Really? It might be a little challenge now, but if I got on my back and kind of did the back, backstroke and took my time, I could swim across. It's small. Everything's small. You know, and people don't take into account that Jesus ministry probably encompassed maybe a hundred square miles. It's baffling. Is that it was pretty concentrated. Yeah. Yeah. And even here in the United States, there's some, there's some effects of that. If you go to Louisiana where Pentecost was pre automobile, mm -hmm. there'll be churches that are three miles apart. And the reason is because they went by horse and buggy. They went by horse, they walked. Yeah. And so you needed a church every three miles. And now their mic frequencies get caught up with yeah. each other. And one <laughs> yeah. pastor's preaching in the other so church. There's one church. I, I can't remember where it was. If it was uh, Lake Charles. I can't. I want to say it was Lake Charles. The pastor took me by there. And there was a church, an apostolic church. And 100 yards away was another apostolic church. And I said, what, what is this? And he said, oh, that's a church split. <laughs> He said, people over here started back in the early 1900s and, and they had a, a fight yeah. in the church. And well, by God, we're going to go over here and start our own church. And they literally went 100 yards. And there are these, both these beautiful buildings side by side. God help us. 
And what's crazy is we have countries where we have no missionary. No missionaries. Lord help us. So you're, you're pastoring uh, in California. Yeah, we're about uh, 50 miles east of San Francisco. San Francisco. So we started nine years ago in a city called Tracy. But you're not in Tracy anymore. We're not. No, so we just bought a building in Manteca. Manteca. Manteca yep. is where we're at. Bought a building there, remodeled it, and uh, God's given us great revival. We're excited about it. Well, it's really a are. beautiful building. Yeah. And it's a miracle story. Thank you for coming and preaching our dedication yeah. service. It was yeah. it was an honor to have you, and our people <laughs> loved it. Our people love the network. So it's... Um, it's exciting. God's doing big things in Manteca, but we want to obviously try to expand our reach and reach the world. So your your passion, your your heart driven passion is mission. The mission itself. It really is. You know, uh, brother, my my grandparents were missionaries to Africa for thirty three years. Yeah, the Allard name is renowned for that. Yeah. So so missions is in our blood, and so we know the intricacies and the struggles of missions, and. Um, we want to try to take and do whatever we can do on the local church level and then with technology to make sure that missions is uh, fully funded and and not only fully funded, we want to be able to send more missionaries in these last days. Yeah. Um, I was reading just recently that South Korea is now the largest missionary sending country in the world. Are you serious? It has eclipsed America. And so I think a lot of that has to do with funding. Um, and I think um, that, the, that the Lord has given us some solutions to that. And so... So we're excited about it. One of the things about East Coast that we were able to do that we want to be really um, conscious about, and particularly in this session, and we're going to be promoting it ongoing, but we yeah. want to promote it um, heavily this session, is we are partnering together on the SEED Project. We are. And the SEED Project is an exciting, exciting thing it's a it's a website let's talk a little bit about it um, absolutely it's a fintech product and um you came up with this idea this was a brainchild of yours talk a little bit about how yeah so i mean nine, about uh, excuse me two years ago we were praying about how to support missionaries uh, on a monthly basis because our church locally our church last year gave a significant sum of money to missions six digits six figures and uh, we're, we're filling that, and I'm sure most churches are filling that. There's only so much that the local church can do. And uh, some of my best friends are missionaries today. And so we were praying about how we could do more because we know that the need is great. And uh, two years ago, that I, I really believe God birthed this in my spirit. Ultimately, what happened was I had invested um, or I had purchased a little app called Acorns, and it was an investment app. And some of you may know a little bit about Acorns, but Acorns basically takes your change, change rounds it up, um, and then once you re reach a certain threshold, it puts that change into index funds, mutual funds, high-risk funds, whatever you want to do. And so one day I was sitting using that app, and I had noticed how much that I had built up or saved up uh, through just roundups. And the thought occurred to me, we need to be doing this for missions. And um, I'm not a software engineer, and quite honestly, I'm not really uh, very techy. But when you get the right people on your team, you can make things happen. And so we found a, a great software engineer and we said we want to, in essence, um, build a product that's going to be very similar to Acorns. It has some slight nuances, but it's going to be a, a product where we can take and uh, round up our purchases as apostolics. Round up technology. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about round up. Yeah. So let's just say we use the example a lot of the times if you go to the coffee shop and you get a coffee, $4.50 automatically what happens is that purchase becomes $5. Mm -hmm. 50 cents then goes to, goes into this missions account. And then from there, every month, we, we will make monthly distributions to missionaries that are working around the world. So that's, that's revolutionary. Um, we're talking about change. Yeah. So years ago, you know, uh, in the UPCI, She's for Christ, yeah. was sent many missionaries. Bought oh. my, yeah, bought my grandparents' cars for 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. Great program, and one of the one of the things that they had was they had a little coin. What would they call that? It was like a coin collector, coin envelope, coin envelope, yeah, a coin folder cool. where you would take quarters and you would put them in the little slots and you yeah. fill out your 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 little uh, quota there for the day or the week or what it was, whatever it was, and and so you would then turn those in, and it was a way to collect spare change. Yeah, we are living in a world now where if you get loose change, it's kind of rare now. Yeah. 
it's being phased out. It's it's rolling around in your cup holder. It might be in, you know, your car in a little compartment somewhere. Sure. But now we're digital. We're we're credit cards. We're debit cards. We are now we're getting into cryptocurrencies. Um, so to round up, it can be as little as seven cents. Absolutely. And I mentioned last night the big spenders might round it up to seventy five cents. It might round up to seventy five cents. But instead of saying here, I need to come up with a thousand dollars to give to missions. Let me save up and let me scrimp and let me pinch. This is a painless, almost unnoticeable way. Absent minded, yeah. It's just out of sight, out of mind, and it's just steadily accruing. Yeah, and, and as a pastor, you know, last year I mentioned a few moments ago, I think our church gave in the neighborhood of like one hundred and fifty three thousand dollars to missions. I don't want to lose that. I think that our church's identity is we love to give to missions. What's beautiful about Seed, which is the app that we're rolling out, the website that we're rolling out, is that it's out of sight, out of mind giving, and it doesn't. It's not going to interact or really interfere with our our local church's giving. Mm -hmm. So to me, this is just icing on the cake, right? So our churches, I believe, will all still continue to give as they've always given to missions. Um, we don't want to interrupt or disturb that cycle at all, but this is just a lot of, especially millennials and teenagers that are not participating in missions giving now can be brought in and really yeah. help us make a huge difference. Well, and people don't realize if we could get a thousand people to sign up, and if you're watching right now, pause the video, go to seedgiver.org seed seedgiver.org and sign up all you do is put your first name your last name in and your email address we're not launching it quite yet this is our <clears throat> this is our way of informing you and keeping you up to date on when we're going to launch which is going to be january of 2024 yeah absolutely we're, we're our date is january 1 and we're looking forward to it and i think we can I really believe with God's help, we can we can uh, attract a thousand users, if not more. Yeah. I believe that there's a thousand apostolics that would love to participate in rounding up their change. change. So I think um, it's huge. <laughs> it's a no brainer. Yeah. Okay. So people don't realize the struggle missionaries have. We're talking about, okay, you, you understand missionary kids. Mm -hmm. What's it like to have a birthday and nobody knows it? Yeah. And your mom and dad are struggling and they're trying to live in a foreign country. Nobody knows your birthday yeah. and you're five. So one of the things that we've kind of built into the architecture of seed is a personal touch aspect. And so we are going to be sending all of our missionaries, kids, birthday cards. Um, we want to take care of our missionaries and on their anniversaries. Mm. Um, all of these things mean a lot to us and, and not only their birthdays, but their ocean, but like college scholarships. There's, there's really not been much thought given to how these kids are going to be able to go to college. I was yeah. talking to my good friend, Brother Shepherd just a couple of weeks ago, and one of his biggest concerns as a missionary is how, how am I going to be able to afford college for my, my two children? Yeah. And I told him, I said, Jonathan, I said, with seed, you don't have to worry about it. I said, we're going to take and we're going to help, really help you and make sure that these kids, if the Lord will help us have scholarships um, so that they're fully funded. Fine. When they're 18, 19, Isn't 20. That beautiful. Yeah. I mean, really, if if we can catch the vision of this, we can we can remember we can remember these missions. It's not only about the missionaries, it's about the missionary kids. Yeah. And I I've shared with you this before. My dad was a missionary's kid in Africa. And every year, every year, it would they would there would be a birthday card that would come from Sister Tinny. She was the only one that would often send him a birthday card. Isn't that something? But this is before the days of internet and FaceTime. Yeah. And she she was mindful enough to remember that the missionaries' kids felt forgotten about. And so we want to bring them into the fold of this, and there's going to be an emotional support aspect, and I think it's really needed today. Well, there's no doubt. It's mind-boggling to me that as apostolics that we, we're just now getting to this. Yeah. You know, God has given us these tools. Let's use these tools. Yeah. So instead of one church giving a quarter million dollars with a big sacrificial offering, you're talking about, 5,000 people collectively taking their change out of their cup holder and putting it into a digital repository. That 5,000 people that would sign up for this would be millions of dollars if they would leave it for the, for the year. Yeah. That would be millions of dollars that would go to yes, it's, the it's, gospel. It's huge. According to our research, the average user on Acorns that's rounding up their change is 
uh, contributing about sixty dollars a month to their their investments. Mm -hmm. And so, if we use that sixty dollars a month number with five thousand people, we're raising three point six million dollars a year. It's huge. That is. And so what's what's wild is just um, I believe on the first night of the conference there was ten thousand people listening to East Coast Conference, and so if we can attract and and really compel five thousand, I mean we're moving the needle, yeah, big time. Okay, and I, I don't know that people even fully understand the full ramifications of it. So there, here's some of the things that apostolics are now starting to get into. It's crowdfunding. Yes, it is minimally invasive crowdfunding. So we're not having to get up and say, all right, who will give $1,000? Who will give $500? Who? Okay, that's we don't need that. All we need is people who have a burden that say, I can build a church with a cup of coffee. Yes. It's powerful, isn't it? That's mind-boggling. <laughs> a teenager can do that. Yeah. Okay, if everybody did it, if everybody pulled that resource, this is what this is what McDonald's does with the Ronald McDonald House. This is what Walmart does with the Children's Miracle Network. Samaritan's Purse. Samaritan's Purse, Billy Graham. So first of all, we, we directly fund missionaries. Another thing is we can create investment vehicles that further build that to where one day we can have maybe the first apostolic hospital. Yeah, I think there's all kinds of models that are available to us and with wisdom and and obviously good counsel, right? We can hopefully create a nest egg that will not only be able to take care of today's missionaries, but we'll be able to take care of the, the missionaries of tomorrow, the Lord no tarries. Doubt. No doubt. And, and to your point, um, I mean, we don't have, to my knowledge, uh, we, we've just built a clinic in Roatan. You and I have been part of that with Brother Jones. And um, he was doing a great job there for many years in um, on the island of Roatan in Honduras. But it would be beautiful. I think your vision, my vision, is to see a, an apostolic hospital one day. Yeah. And uh, this allows us to to really get over the hill, crest the mountain, and be able to do some big stuff like that. Well, there's no doubt. Um, it's revolutionary. I love the idea. Um, we've kind of operated on a monthly support of giving a little bit here, a little bit there. Churches, maybe for $25, they'll sponsor a missionary, which makes a missionary have to leave their field. Imagine if your pastor had to leave for a year or two years and never come home during that time and leave the church in the hands of a local leader or some leader that you're not familiar with in a foreign land where there's very little fellowship and the gospel's trying to take root. Yes. He comes home after a year or two. He's finally been able to squeeze enough financial support mm -hmm. and his church is gone. Yeah. Or it's greatly depleted. Listen, back in the, the 70s, 80s, and 90s when my grandparents were in Africa, they would be on the field for four years and they would literally have to come home for four years mm, mm. and deputize. I think today it's down to two years. You know, if you're, if you're going gangbusters, you can, and you can really raise um, a lot of money real fast. But at one time it was four years, four years on the field, four years off the field. And I mean, just, I think there's a better way to do this, yeah. right? Our missionaries in the past have done so well. They've been so effective, but, um, you know, it's like when they invented the will uh, in antiquity, it would have been ignorant to not use it. So I think where we're at right now is with technology. Uh, yes, there are a lot of dangers in technology, but uh, we've tried to be very, very cautious and careful about putting this together. And uh, what's beautiful about Seed is there's gonna be absolute, complete transparency. I'm calling it hyper-transparency. Yeah. So every every single month, with God's help, on our website, you'll be able to see who we gave to. You'll be able to see what our causes are. And uh, it's all going to be uh, controlled by a CPA. Even I, myself, don't have access to any of those types of funds. Everything's going to be operated and controlled uh, by a CPA. So we're using a very, I would say, uh, a very formal type of approach here when yeah. it comes to internal controls. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Boy, that, that's so needed. I want to ask you a question about the tech dynamic and some of the tools we have. But before I sure. do that, I want to jump in and I want to mention something to the bibliophiles that are listening. A lot of you have been um, enjoying the book written by Stephen Gill, The History and Development of the Doctrine of the Trinity. The Gill is a, he is a great author who works with us here at Biblos. He has a new book out. And this book is called The Last Man, Reclaiming Father and Son Language in the Oneness 
Pentecostal movement. If you've ever been confused about the Father and the Son and why the New Testament uses those words so freely, and it makes you uncomfortable and you think, oh, you know what, that's kind of a Trinitarian verse. This book dispels that. There's no Trinitarian verses. There's, um, there's just Scripture. And Brother Gill has taken the time to extrapolate that information. We want to share it with you. This is part of the Biblical Hebrew Academy Online, where he's an adjunct instructor. Um, he wrote the book because he believes in end-time revival, and he wants people to be able to articulate the oneness position and to unlock the beauty of the Father and Son language. So this is for Christians that um, are thinking people. It's for pastors. It's for Bible study teachers. We want to help you. Uh, how would it? I think it was Colossians that talked about the riches of the full assurance of understanding. Mm -hmm. We want to help get you that understanding that you need to communicate the gospel effectively, effectively to your friends. So you can pre-order it right now at Stephen Gill Books at Gmail dot com. Stephen Gill Books at gmail.com. The pre-order price is $10 plus shipping. You can get that, uh, your order in, it will come to you. The launch date officially is Friday, November 3rd, and it will be available on Amazon. So you can get it on Amazon November 3rd. But we want to promote that. It is a great book. His research is great, and I know that you will be edified by it. So take the time, order the book, support apostolic authors. You will be enriched, and we will further this great gospel. Stephen's a great guy. He's a good guy. He's a good, he's good sharp. guy. Great pastor, Pastor Luke St. Clair, good friend of mine. But I have been so impressed. I've read many of Brother Gill's books already, and they're phenomenal. You know, he's from Kokomo. I've heard that. My my hometown. Lord bless him. Yeah. <laughs> I knew there was something a little well, He's a little hometown off. boy, man. I got to support these hometown guys. No, um, no, he's a good guy. It's And I love these authors that are rising up. Biblos has a passion to promote a love for the word and the spreading of the gospel. And, and what's cool about Stephen is he's not 60. He's <laughs> writing. Yeah. He's writing as I think, I think he's in his early thirties, maybe late twenties. Yeah. He's a young, young millennial. It's yeah. pretty, it's well, he pretty, digs it out, man. He does. He does. For the Stephen, not so many footnotes, my friend. <laughs> no, that's what makes it scholarly. So yeah, I'm joking about that. It does. So I love the books. I love the products that are now available to us. Biblos is one of these products. Seed is one of these products. Yeah. Um, there's a resistance sometimes that uh, maybe people that aren't familiar with tech, they're not familiar. It, it, it looks like compromise. It looks like we're doing something. I don't know what you're doing. And I, here's what I'll hear sometimes. I'll hear, well, it's just the direction you're going. Mm -hmm. It's just the direct. It's just a feeling. Okay, look, man, we are, we're Acts 238, oneness people. Mm -hmm. We're holiness people. We are conservative holiness people. Um, we're contending for a model of apostolicity that is... I like that word. Uh, you like that? That's a good word. I, I just kind of grabbed that out of the repertoire. <laughs> <laughs> What's the deal? What do you think the deal is with people being so afraid of it? You know, I, I think this is where we're at. And I believe that God's giving us some, some crucial tools as... as we, Ultimately, the end of time is nearing. I think we have to use them to reach people. Brother Alviar said it so well. Uh, you know, I know we talked about him a few moments ago, but he said it so well. And what what more trusted voice is there than Brother Alviar? I think there's there's just certain places we cannot reach unless we use technology. Could you imagine trying to catch a fish without a net or without a pole? Ah, yeah. I mean, it's it's probably pretty difficult, I would think. So wouldn't you say, this is not a stretch to say that the printing press was the catalyst for the enlightenment and the reformation. Yeah. And I think they tried to shut that down. Well, they killed people. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's books. I mean, books at one time were considered to be yeah. very technologically advanced <laughs> instruments. So I, I, Hey, if I can be counted among some of the guys that were killed in the reformation, I'm speaking of people like Zervatus, go yeah. ahead and Whatever we have to do to, to tear yep. the world upside down. Well, I, I get it with compromise. I understand that. I understand people doing new things that are unfamiliar that are laden with compromise. Mm -hmm. I get it. I have seen it. I, I have fought it. Where people throw away scriptural principles, they, they say, well, that's old-fashioned. We're, we're enlightened now. Yeah. We, we don't need standards of dress. We don't need modest, modesty, distinction in men and women's apparel. 
um, worldliness. Okay, we have seen people do that where they've thrown it all out the window and they've just changed radically overnight. Yeah. But change and newer tools does not equate with compromise. No, no. I mean, I remember one time hearing the argument that a wireless microphone was compromised because it, it allowed freedom of movement on the platform. I mean, we... Come on. Yeah, I mean, it, it can kind of go overboard. I mean, I think probably there's no greater lovers of of apostolic conservatism than you and I. Yeah. And um, I think, though, we have to use the tools that are at our disposal. Yeah. Not everything needs a hammer in the sense of, you know, you can't fix everything with a crescent wrench. You know, my grandpa was accused of compromise with harvest time. Really? Mm -hmm. Like in the early days of harvest time, it was radio. It was, um, was kind of novel. And so he was accused of leaving the old paths and it was it was kind of a move away from the camp meeting tent meeting sawdust on the floor sure. dynamic and now this this new radio my goodness this is surely an instrument of, of of hell well time went on and we get into the 80s and 90s and harvest time was accused of being old-fashioned out of step yeah. out of date so <laughs> you know what are we doing? Are we preaching the gospel or are we fighting for what we're comfortable with? I can tell you right now, I'd rather my people be watching your podcast than Stephen Furtick's podcast. Wow. Okay. There you go. And I, I think that as an apostolic pastor, and I love Brother McKillop's podcast, there's some others out there, Brother Young's podcast, great podcast. I think we need to have this gotta on have the it. menu. We got to have yeah, it. Yeah, we got to have it on the menu. Well, I love the tools. I love the hour we're in. I love the fact that you have a burden for this. I'm excited to partner with you in seed. Biblos is with you. Durham's with you. The whole apostolic world, I think, is going to get on board with this. Man, I'm excited about it. I really do believe we've approached this with a pure spirit. You know, our agenda is to fund missionaries. And um, I think, Lord willing, down the road, maybe there will be some other opportunities. But first and foremost, we got to fund, we have to fund missionaries. I'm I'm, I'm, I really do. I feel so bad for my friends when they have to call and say, Brother Allard, would you please help me with this project? Yeah. Like, we're, we're down to a, cru a crucial moment. We need funding like yesterday. And so I think this helps I don't tremendously. think people realize what we're talking about, too. Maybe we need to dig down just a shade more before we close. We're talking about going from $25 a month PIMs that you have to get, you know, 150 of them. Yeah. To this being able to give a missionary $8,000 a month. Yeah, so our 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 let our goal is to make sure that missionaries we really want to if we can attract the users which we will be able to attract them, we want to be able to provide each missionary with about eight thousand dollars a month in monthly support. Yeah, so it's going to be a it's going to be a revolutionary thing, right? I mean, it's just these these poor folks have to make it to to so many different meetings. They're they're out of their context. They're leaving their countries uh, to come to a conference and hopefully there's a missions offering. I mean, we, we all probably are familiar with how this works. Yeah. So this allows them to stay boots on the ground for a much longer period of time. And what's beautiful is there's gonna be even a vetting process. There's gonna be accountability. There's going to, this is not just, you know, you come to us and say, hey, we want $8,000 a month and, and the number may change, but you may come to us and say, hey, we wanna be a missionary. There's There's a complete vetting process and pastors need to know about that. So we are very adamant and there's men that are going to be coming on board to help us with that, that I believe will speak to ultimately the spirit of what we're trying to do. Praise God. So uh, I just, I believe it's, it's, it's right for right now. It's the right thing to do. Yeah. To leave your field of labor, you're, you're not a high flying jet setting speaker. Yeah. Uh, I mean, some people are very, very gifted orators, but, but a lot of times it's the burden of a man and a woman. They are, they're simple people. They love God. They are fulfilling. Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. They're having to leave that field to come back here and follow kind of outdated. And I'm all for the good that missions programs did. Thank God for them. Yeah. But it's agrarian in many aspects. Yeah. Like, so to, to this point, this is a great point because if you look and you compare, let's say Stephen Jones or Ben Rodriguez's pre, uh, level of preaching and their ability to connect with yeah. churches. They're, they're probably a little bit, um, I, I would say they're poised to, to be able to raise support. Yeah, they're polished um, guys. They're polished guys, they're sharp. But I wanna contrast that with my grandfather. And I'm, this is no disrespect to my grandfather. But my grandfather was a foster kid. He came into the church later on in life. Um, he, he came from a broken family, didn't have any kind of high school diploma. Mm. Graduated from high school the same day my dad did. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. wow. Grandpa wow. had probably one of the largest missions works ever in the United Pentecostal Church in, in West Africa. But, and I don't mean any disrespect by this, and my grandfather knows that, he probably wouldn't be preaching conferences, yeah. right? He's yeah. He was very much your traditional missionary. He would show up. He would do 15 minutes of slideshows. He would talk about the work. My grandma would come up in her African dress and she would talk about what's going on in the Ivory Coast or Ghana or Senegal, wherever they were. And um, he would preach for 10, 15 minutes. I mean, it may, it probably his ministry wasn't denoted in the States for hundreds of people getting the Holy Ghost. But as far as a missionary is concerned, extremely effective. Wow. Extremely effective. And so I think one of the things we, we probably need to be looking at in the future is uh, missionaries sometimes are cut from a different cloth. Yeah. And we need to celebrate that. Oh, those are heroes. They're not all John Shepherds. They're not all Stephen Jones. They're not all Ben Rodriguez's. There are missionaries that have other skill sets yeah. that are equal, if not superior. There's no doubt. To that of these other great men. When these men and women get to heaven, yeah. they are going to be in the roll call of faith. Yes, absolutely. Absolute heroes of the faith. Yeah. My grandparents are the people that I have in mind that I want to try to raise support for. Those types of people. Isn't that beautiful? Just godly people that are just godly saints that want to do a work for God. And they will spend their entire life learning a language away from family to do that. And we have an obligation as the American church to fund them. If we don't, who, who's going to fund them? Who's going to fund them? Yeah. Seedgiver.org. Seedgiver.org. Seedgiver Seedgiver Go there, put your name in, sign up for the email. We will update you on how it's going and, and, and the upcoming launch date. But with a cup of coffee, coffee with a tank of gas, the pennies that you put on top of that can build a powerful, formidable mission Jesus model name. that changes the world. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, thank you so much for, for partnering with us on this, Brother Urshan. You have been a tremendous help. And uh, Brother Galindo, Brother Calhoun, Yuri Singuesa, it's we've got the right team and we're gonna make it, we're gonna make it fly. Well, with we're, God's honored. Help. we're honored to do it. Thank you for your passion for it, and thank you that God gave you this vision. Um, and for those of you that are watching, I hope this is a blessing to you. It is a way that we can all work together to build God's kingdom. So prayerfully consider it. We look forward to partnering with you by the grace of God. And until next time, God bless you, God keep you, and God cause his face to shine upon you.